our thoughts, um, our full support, and our sympathy to everybody that is getting affected, all the families and uh, all the individuals, and obviously all the country that uh, that is pulling together to try to to find the best possible solution in this difficult moment. And uh, from here, I just want to to show my my full support and uh, and ask everybody in the way that they can to to support because it's a uh, it's terrible what is happening. Now, so. Um, can I start with some team news? In particular, is it good news on, on Gabriel? Uh, yes. So we have a training session today. If he can complete that, he will be available. He hasn't had any training session yet, but uh, if he's able to do that today, he will be available in the squad. And as regarding the others, um, Calafiori, Odegaard, I know Ben White was sort of left out of the present game as a precaution. What about those three? So Ricky and Martin are out, definitely, and uh, with Ben we don't know yet, because he hasn't trained yet, uh, he could not train, he could not get involved, so um, let's wait and see if he's available or not. I appreciate it's still extremely early in the season, but with the gap that is starting to open up at the top of the table, is that a concern at all? Well, you want to be first, you want to win every game. Uh, we know the situations that uh, we have to play with this season, but... Uh, we are right in the mix. We know that the tough challenge that we're going to face uh, tomorrow, but we are fully ready for that. This trip to St. James's Park is almost exactly a year after the last trip there. Yeah. After that game, obviously, you had some very pointed comments to make about the standard of refereeing. When you reflect on that, do you have any regrets about anything you said? That you As part of the past and uh, part of the situation that happened, that you, you learn from me, you take a lot of positives as well, and uh, we moved on. Do you think the standard of refereeing has improved since then? Do you think your comments worked? My intention is not that the comments work. I, I have to say what I feel in the day. And, and do you think the standard of refereeing has improved since then? Or? Yeah, they certainly trying their best. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on to Niv from Premier League. Hi, Hi. Good to see you. Um, first of all, um, about the Liverpool performance, obviously there were a lot of discussions and debate before the game. How are you going to cope with the fact that several key players were suspension and, and, and injury as well? Overall, it was a good performance. Do you think after the Liverpool game, you've learned maybe something, something new about your group? Well, unfortunately, a lot of things happened that uh, we didn't even plan for them. Um, I was suspecting with the size of the squad that we had to be very adaptable in the season. And that's something that we worked from day one in pre-season. But obviously, not to be that adaptable, especially in, in certain scenarios. But for sure, the team showed an incredible capacity to compete, to be better than uh, than the opponent in, in many moments. But it's true that in the second half, very early again, something happened that, that affected the rest. But we are there. Question please about Ben White. Um, he obviously played in the position, not his natural position. Um, great partnership with Gabriel. Gabriel went off as well very early in the second half. And that lovely assist to Bukayo Saka. Mm. How impressive did we thought he gave him on Sunday? Well, that's Ben's quality. You know, he can play in those uh, two positions. Within those positions, he can adapt his role and play in different heights as well, especially in ball possession. So we're demanding, you know, against a very difficult, tricky opponent with very particular duels, especially in that section of the pitch, to, to do that job when he hasn't played there for over a year. And I think he was really good. I was wondering what did you make of the Newcastle start of the season. On one hand, we saw him against Chelsea a few days ago in the league up, he did well. And on the other hand, if you look at the league position, it's, it's not really ideal. What you make of it. I mean, the league position after nine games is very tricky, you know. And we see the, the fixtures that they, they have as well and some certain situations that they've been through as well. But they are a fantastic team. They are really well coached. They are super intense. Uh, great stadium to play, you know, the energy that you're going to face there. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, so well. <coughs> Hi, Mikhail. How are you? Very good. Um, can I start by asking you about... Ruben Amrit, who's going to be joining Manchester United, he's 39. You know what it's like to come into a Premier League, uh, be a Premier League manager at a massive club when you're under 40, and you were 37 when you started here. Yeah. yeah, but I, I cannot talk about these kind of situations. No, I just wonder what it was like to be a young manager coming into the Premier League. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Thought okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> I'd <enough. laughs> Um, it was going to Newcastle this weekend. One of the big talking points after the midweek game was Ethan Manieri, who you described as having 
a real super talent on my hands. Can you tell us how good you think he'll be and the, the job he's done in the last two years? Because when he made his debut at 15, there was probably a lot of pressure on him to go on and succeed. Mm. Well, I can talk how good he is right now, and at 17 years old, to, to be in the position that he is in, in one of the biggest clubs in Europe, um, I think sums up really well the level that he has. Um, what is going to happen in the future, uh, mainly is going to depend on him and how much he wants it. Uh, at the moment, he wants it a lot, and he's surrounded by the right people, and uh, the, the crystal ball to see what is going to be in a year, two years, three years. No, my prediction is going to be very positive. In terms of very positive, right up there with some of the best players that you've seen come through at this age group and, and moving forward? Well, it's rare to see a talent like this at 17 years old. That's true. But uh, when we made uh, him um, his debut in the Premier League, there was a, a lot of talk about it. But we didn't do it because it was a gift. We did it because we knew the pathway that we wanted to build with him and we wanted to <laughs> to send him a really strong sign about how much we trust him and how much we wanted him to stay with us. And, uh, yeah, we are delighted to have him. One last one, injuries. You've had some injuries. Maybe other clubs have had more, other clubs have had less. Why this season are we seeing so many clubs suffering so many injuries? Man City apparently have only got 13 fit players here this weekend. You've been battling to get centre-halves on the pitch all season. Well, I think there are two aspects. Um, one, I think we've been quite unlucky uh, with with some of them, and especially to happen in, in very similar positions. And then, obviously, the demands that the, those players are having uh, every every week. If you put that into the perspective that, as well, you have a smaller squad because all the restrictions that are hitting all the clubs that you cannot have 30 quality players in the squad. Uh, the moment that one player has to play more minutes affects and the knock on and the the domino effect for the rest of the squad is, is quite difficult to manage. Alex Bibson. Hi, Miguel. Hi. There's been lots of talk around Ethan since he's made his debut, like you said, and it's happening again now because he's had the good performances. Do you have to protect him when there's so much talk around him? I think the biggest thing is to push him. And then when he's pushed, just always grab him at behind to make sure that he's always stable and protected. But this talent, you have to push him. Uh, the protection is is necessary or keep an eye on him and be always in the right distance. But uh, he needs to he needs to see that he can go and he can fly and, and don't cut any wings. And uh, how helpful for him is it to see Bakari Saka who's had the same journey come through and one of the, the best players in, in Europe, is it helpful to have someone that's gone through the same journey in the same team? I think that creates uh, belief um, in the building, you know, uh, through all the academy, all the young players, the players that we signed as well at a very early age, that uh, that there is a pathway that is clear, that we're going to give them opportunities, and uh, if they earn it, they're going to be treated like, like the rest. Nick from Hades. Hi, Michael. First, I'll ask you about uh, Thomas Partey, talking about adaptable players. He's played in different positions for the end of the season. He's also played more Premier League minutes this season than the whole of last season. Can you just talk about his contribution to the, the team? <laughs> Well, one thing that obviously we needed uh, from Thomas uh, to be at the level that we want to be, certainly. So he's working so hard uh, to do what he's doing at the moment. I think he's playing really well, as you said, in different positions with different demands, and he's coping with it in a, in a great way. He's a, he's a big player for us. And he's only 31, but he's out of contract at the end of the season. Is there any plans to talk to him? Or I him love what you said. He's only 31, so yeah. And he's in a, in a really good place. And uh, yeah, we'll have these discussions. Okay, thanks. Okay, Clive. Hi, Hi. Um, You mentioned that you haven't seen many talented players like Ethan at 17. You yourself were quite a talented 17 year old when you started it. No, yes, no, you. no, with that level. No? No, I, I was really lucky as well because somebody trusted me uh, at that age and gave me the opportunity, which is what they need as well. So the talent to emerge, somebody has to give you the chance, the belief, and then you have to be surrounded by the, by the right team, the right players. And if you do that, you have a chance. Just wondering, from that time, is there anything from your personal experience where you think, oh, I shouldn't do that with Ethan based on my experience, or this is good for a player at 17, or is there anything from your experience that you think you'll be used with him? Yeah, probably individually, a lot of things that I should have done that I probably learned. So if I can give him, we can give him advice. Um, great, 
what I like about him is is that that he really believes that he has the ability to do it. He really believes that uh, that he is more than capable to to take anybody's place, and his teammates. You know, he's in the right of of the trust of them, which I think it's is vital for a for a teenager coming through. And he was cramping at the end at Preston. Is that physical side maybe the reason why we haven't seen as much in the Premier League? Because it is a big step up from those Carabao Cup. It's games. a huge jump, you know, and Ethan in the past as well. We need to understand where it's coming from. We had any issues uh, in the last three, five years um, in, in, in his growth, in his development, and the physical part, as the mental part, not much the tactical, are really important to take care of. Uh, because the load goes through the roof straight away without you knowing, and then you look back and say, oh, look, look what he's done in four months compared to the last 18 months. So, yeah, we need to keep an eye on that. Thanks. Jordan, I know life as a Premier League manager, it can be you know, high intensity, a lot of pressure. It was interesting the last few weeks to see you speak about meditation becoming part of your, your everyday life. I just wondered when we're asking about refereeing decisions, etc., and the pressure of dealing with that. Yeah. Does, that does that actually help you? Uh, on the touchline, I haven't got to that point uh, to go <laughs> on, on meditating mold. Uh, yeah, maybe it's something that I have to, to happen. I just want the best for the team, and I want to give the team the best chance to be as competitive as possible to win the majority of the football match. So I know that, obviously, when they change the rules and certain behaviours towards the touchline, uh, we need to adapt to that and we need to evolve and uh, that's what I try to do. You talk about adapting, I think this season you're one of five managers not to have a yellow card yet. Um, out of you, you, when you look at yourself, do you think you have evolved in managing your emotions better than you maybe the last few years? Well, I don't want to miss any any games, that's for sure. I cannot <coughs> promise you that if we score a goal I'm going to be jumping up and down and uh, down the touchline. I cannot guarantee that, uh, hopefully as well, they have adapted, you know, and they have understood as well that uh, yeah, emotions are a big part of that. I cannot control myself, certainly, in one square line. Uh, so, so far it worked. Simon Snyder. Um, okay, can I just check on, on Ben? He was struggling with, with a groin injury, I think, before. Is it the same issue that's come up now to keep him out? No, that was, uh, this is related more to a joint. And, yeah. uh, No, I don't expect him to be uh, available before the break now, unfortunately. Okay, James Eastman. Hi, Mikhail. One more injury on Martin. You said he's out for Saturday. You, has he got, is Milan a possibility or is that going to come to a... Well, now is the stage when he's going to start to do certain work with us and, and just see how he deals with pain. Is his movement natural enough? Is physically now at the level that requires him to compete, uh, but yeah, with the work rate and the hours that he's put in, uh, I will be surprised if the moment that he starts training with us, you don't say he looks ready. So, hopefully soon. And, and just on Newcastle, when you've done your video work for this week, presumably you watched the game from last season up there, mm. did you have the same emotion when you saw the goal? <laughs> I didn't stop on that sequence, <laughs> so I, I didn't. I didn't want to go through that. It's, it's already my hard drive, so I didn't want to go through that again. Because I mean, there are some fans who think the club have received maybe a bit harsher treatment from referees since that game. Do you do you, do you give any credence to that at all? No, that on purpose. You mean? Yeah, or whether there's some sort of subconscious thing against Arsenal or no? Because every club at the end has got his history, and and they have games and situations and comments and. That's, that's part of the game, I think, and we have to we have to understand it as it is. You know, is every decision that when I make, I'm gonna get um, criticized, or nobody's going to understand, or they're going to understand, appraise it. Uh, they are part of the game, so we're always gonna have opinions about the jobs. That's normal. Do you think there's any sort of lasting consequence from that whole episode, or is it just in the past? No, hopefully we we passed it. We talked through it in depth, and and that's done. It's a year, a year in football. It's it's a long, long time. Sí, como he dicho al principio en mi rueda de prensa, eh, nada, mostrar todo nuestro, nuestro cariño, todo nuestro apoyo. Eh, el sufrimiento de ver lo que está pasando, el desastre, eh, cómo afecta a nuestro país, a todas las familias, a todos los que no estamos cerca pero que, que sentimos el dolor de lo que está pasando 
y por otro lado ver también cómo responde el país, cómo responden las personas en momentos de dificultad, que eso creo que es algo también muy bonito y pedirle a todo el mundo que desde donde esté intente ayudar para que, para que la situación se, se vaya solucionando cuanto, cuanto antes posible.